For 50 years we have served the Lord in foreign and home missions. After we were saved, our greatest desire was to serve the Lord on the mission field. We received an in-depth and practical preparation at the Moody Bible Institute. In June 1955, I graduated from the pastor's missionary course and Dottie from the Christian education course. On June the 17th, 1955, Dottie and I were married and after a short honeymoon, we attended candidate school, thus beginning our missionary ministry. The following eight months were occupied in deputation meetings to raise our support. God provided our needed support early April of 1956, and we boarded the plane and went to San Jose, Costa Rica, where we were blessed with good teachers for an intensive year of language study. In September 1957, we arrived in Venezuela to continue our foreign missionary ministry. For the next 14 years, we served the Lord in many areas of Venezuela. Our first term we lived on the Colombian border. We began a new work in the town of Ureña. This was the first church that we had the privilege of founding. Even through severe persecution, the Lord raised up this church in an extremely fanatical town. During those first years, God gave us four children. Donald, born in Costa Rica, Chuck, born in Venezuela, Beverly, born in Colombia, and finally Jim, born in Indiana. Our children were an asset to the ministry and opened many doors of opportunity to witness. During the next 10 years, we established many churches in small towns in the plains of Venezuela. We flew throughout the great plains and jungles of Venezuela using a Cessna 185 airplane. The Great Plains of Venezuela is a vast area of 200 by 320 miles. At first, the only way that this area could be visited was by means of river travel or a jeep in the dry season. Only a few missionaries visited this area prior to my working in the plains. There were 500 airstrips which permitted us to access this entire area all year long. In the state of Apure, there were dozens of towns scattered along the river with small landing strips like El Yagual, Arizmendi and Achaguas, Santa Barbara, only to mention a few. My daily routine was to evangelize from house to house and that at night I would always hold a meeting in the street. Many people were receptive to the gospel. As I preached the word, souls were saved. Since the rivers were filled with piranha and crocodiles, we had to baptize in pools of rainwater which had been covered with moss. In these towns, God enabled me to plant a church and train pastors for the work. With the help of national pastors who would donate a week every three months, these churches were able to receive more visits and training. God indeed helped us see new churches raised up. In some cases, I was able to help them build their church building. I began visiting La Victoria, a town on the Venezuelan-Colombian border. After many came to know the Lord as their Savior, a national pastor was called to serve in that area. Pastor Rafael and his wife were used of the Lord in this ministry. The work grew and God richly blessed this work. Out in the middle of nowhere, I found a group of believers who had come to know the Lord through reading God's Word. From year to year, I held a week-long Bible conference with them. Hundreds attended, coming from miles around, arriving on burros or on foot. It was such a blessing to preach the Word of God to these spiritually hungry souls for a week-long conference. As an additional ministry, I took supplies to missionaries in the jungle and would fly them in and out as necessary. Other missionaries received my assistance whenever possible. In the air or on the ground, daily communications with Dottie was indispensable for my safety and for the good of our family. Dottie took care of our home and was actively involved in the local church with children's classes and ladies' work. For 14 years, we were able to carry on a most difficult but important task of church planting in Venezuela. In 1970, we returned to Indiana for the educational needs of our children. 
Shortly after returning to Indianapolis, we began a Spanish church planting ministry in our home. We later rented a building for our new Spanish mission. A week after leaving Venezuela, I started working for a corporation in Indianapolis as their corporate pilot. I supported my family by flying a corporate prop jet. This work gave me liberty to be home at nights and weekends to continue the Spanish ministry. The Spanish church continued to grow and in 1978 we purchased this old Methodist church for $24,000 which we then remodeled. God blessed this ministry with over 90 in regular attendance. In 1979 we turned this organized Spanish Baptist church over to a Cuban pastor. In 1978 we were accepted by Baptist World Mission to serve the Lord in Guadalajara, Mexico. In January 1980, we arrived in Guadalajara to begin a work with the middle and upper class people. Guadalajara had a population of 2,750,000 in 1980 when we arrived. We rented and later purchased this house where we lived most of our 24 years in Guadalajara. Every night of the week we held Bible studies in different homes in the area and in our home on Sunday. Visitation in our neighborhood was important and new classes were established. From the beginning, I held a two-hour men's Bible study each Monday night in our home. Gradually, our Sunday attendance increased until we had a full house. We then found an adequate building to rent near the center of the city. The interest continued to grow and people were saved and baptized. Two years later, with the tithes and offerings, we were able to purchase this land. On the back section, there were four broken down horse stables. It was a mess, but we began cleaning it out. We started the reconstruction immediately. Everyone did what they could to make it progress. It soon took shape as we painted, cleaned, and made preparation for the first church service in our new location. That day finally arrived. What a transformation! Three years later, there wasn't even standing room, so we used closed-circuit TV for our overflow crowd on the back porch. As we preached the word, others were saved. Over 120 were attending regularly. We held our first Bible Institute class in 1986 to prepare our own people for the ministry. Dottie held a weekly Bible class in our home with the ladies. We started two mission ministries, one in Tala and another in Guadalajara. There was ample space at the site of our building and we drew plans for the construction of the new auditorium. Lupe, a member of our church, began welding the trusses and the foundations were poured for the new construction. A friend of ours and his two sons from Indiana donated many weeks to help weld the trusses and structures. That's your missionary way up in the air stabilizing the first two trusses. Little by little, the building was taking shape. The construction seemed to move slowly, but we only built as offerings were given by our people. No money was borrowed. Soon our neighborhood began to develop and it was a blessing when the city decided to pave our street first. The dedication took place on July the 3rd, 1994, to God be the glory. I preached and taught 10 hours each week, but our church reached a point where it was not growing. As a result of many excusing themselves because of not knowing how to witness, I started writing Bible courses that our people could use in one-on-one -on -one Bible classes to reach the unsaved. It was well received and the brethren really went to work reaching the lost. At the beginning, we had as many as 70 classes each week. I compiled these lessons into a book and many churches throughout Latin America are now using it with success. Our attendance more than doubled in size and many souls were saved. 19,000 books have now been printed in Spanish. I have translated this book into the English language and is now being used in the English-speaking world. The second edition in English came off the press in January of 2005. 
Because many pastors and missionaries on other mission fields have requested this book, this year, the Lord willing, Becoming a Christian will be translated into nine languages, Italian, Portuguese, Suriname, German, Russian, and Ukraine, an African language and two languages spoken in India. I recommend one-on-one -on -one Bible studies, but sometimes a whole family is taught. Presently, there is an average of 34 classes being taught each week to the unsaved by our people in Guadalajara. What a blessing! Souls are being saved and our church is growing. God continued to bless His Word as we taught and preached. The attendance continued to increase as our people faithfully witnessed and held weekly Bible classes. 35 to 40 men still enthusiastically desire to hear the teaching of God's Word for two hours on Monday nights, which helps form a strong foundation for the church. 30 to 40 young people meet every Saturday afternoon, and we are excited about what God is doing in their lives. We have distributed over 100,000 gospel tracts in the city of Guadalajara. Since the Bible Institute began 18 years ago, it has grown beyond all expectations. These men realize that training is vital as they attend the ministerial class. Dottie taught the women's Christian education class at the Bible Institute. For months, the ladies would make plans for the five-day vacation Bible school. Each year, our goal is to have more than 200 children present daily from 9 a.m. to 1 in the afternoon. The well-prepared teacher has the attention of 200 children for the Bible lesson. Our goal is to someday reach enough people to fill this building which holds 750 people. Dottie gave piano lessons to 12 Bible Institute students. Ilsa was the best student and now the church pianist. Since our retirement from the foreign ministry was forthcoming, in the business meeting of March 2003, I presented my resignation as pastor of the church. Realizing he was God's man, there was a unanimous vote to receive Pastor Miguel in my place. Pastor Miguel came to know the Lord 14 years ago, and he immediately started attending our Bible Institute. Three years later, I united Miguel and his fiancée in marriage. He then became our youth pastor and camp director. Five years later, he became my assistant pastor and now the pastor. God is using Pastor Miguel Camacho and Luis Canul as his assistant. Meet Pastor Miguel's family, his wife, Clement, baby Aniel, and Grandma Philippi. We love them as though they were our own children. God is greatly using this humble servant. Pastor Miguel is doing a good job and the work is going forward. Over 300 attend on Sunday morning. To God be the glory. Pray for the work in Guadalajara. The population of this city has grown to six million. Time passes fast. We now have been 50 years in the ministry. It is our desire to continue serving the Lord. We are holding several Bible classes with Spanish-speaking people in the Clearwater, Tampa area using the book, Becoming a Christian. Our plans are to also hold Bible conferences teaching one-on-one -on -one evangelism in both English and Spanish-speaking churches throughout the United States using this proven guide. Brethren, I count not myself to have achieved, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth to those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We are sincerely grateful to all of you who have helped make our missionary work possible during these many years through your prayers and financial gifts. Please continue to pray for us. Thank you.